Okay, so today we will talk about conservation principles. So what is the context in which these uh, principles arise? It is when we study systems that evolve with time. Okay, so that is the context. So let me say a little bit more about all this uh, pretty much by examples. So we will consider a few examples from which it will be clear what a conservation principle means and what sorts of systems we will consider and so on. So here is an example. So what is my system? So here is the description of the system. Imagine we have all the integers marked off on the number line. So it is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so I have the number line on which all the integer points are marked and what I do, so what is my system? My system consists of let us call it 4 coins placed at uh, 4 positions okay, on, on this uh, set of integers. So for a start, here is what I do, I have 4 coins, say one of them placed at minus 1, another placed at 0, uh, 1 and 2. So here are my initial positions. I place 4 coins on these 4 integers. Okay? So this is my initial configuration of the system. So this is what you would call your initial configuration. So this is what happens at let us say time t equal to 0 and my system should now evolve with time. Okay? So then what you have is a rule which tells you what happens at every instant of time. Okay? So let us imagine that here time is not quite a continuous variable but rather a discrete variable which means say at time t equal to 0 the system looks like this, at time t equal to 1 it will change to something else, at time t equal to 2 it will change again and so on. Okay? So the system changes at time steps t equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So what is the, the rule for evolution of the system? So let us call this uh, a move. So what are the allowed moves? How do we call this allowed moves or rules for changing the system. So at time t equal to 1, here is what you are allowed to do. You pick any two of these four coins. So, okay? so here is the allowed move, pick any two of the four coins. Okay? So choose any two and do the following, move one of them k steps to the right and the other k steps to the left. Okay? So move one coin k, where k can be any number, k steps to the right and move the other coin k steps to the left. Okay? So here is a rule for evolving the system. So let us sort of uh, look at one possible trajectory that the system might have taken. So let me only note the four positions of the four coins. So at time t equal to 0, so let me just say here is the value of time. So at time t equal to 0, I have the coins, so here are the positions of the coins. They are, they are at minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Now at time t equal to 1, what am I supposed to do? I am supposed to pick two of these four. So let us say I pick minus 1 and 0, suppose I pick those two and what I am supposed to do is move one of them k steps to the right, the other k steps to the left. Okay? So imagine I moved uh, say 0, 3 steps to the right and minus 1 moved 3 steps to the left. Okay? So that is my, that is the move that I carry out. So minus 1 moves to minus 4, 0 moves to 3 and these two stay as they are. Okay? This could be one thing that happened in the next time step. Then at time t equal to 2, I, I repeat a move, meaning I again pick any two of these four, move one of them k steps to the left, the other k steps to the right. Okay? And here k can be anything. So here k, I mean just makes sense to be an, let us say at least one. So if you do not move them, nothing much happens. So let us say it is at least one, it is an integer at least one. Similarly, so I could have, so here I can have repetition. So for instance, I can choose one and two in my next step and move. Uh, 2 one step to the right and 1 one step to the left. So here is what I could have gotten at the next step if I had chosen these two. So in the first step I chose these two. Here I move 1 one step to the left 
2 one step to the right. So, there are 2 coins now placed at the position 3 for instance and so on. So, you can now imagine how this game plays out. Uh, the system evolves at each time step and at say at time n you know whatever be the configuration at time t equal to n at time t equal to n plus 1 you should take 2 coins out of that configuration and move them in the in the described fashion. Okay, so, the system evolves with time in this fashion and as you can imagine there are many possible trajectories there are many different things that can happen depending on what you chose and how much you moved it and so on. So, here is the question there are 2 questions is it possible for the system at some time t. So, uh, can all the coins <coughs> coincide at the same location at some time t meaning as the system evolves is it at all possible for all the coins. So, they are moving in some funny fashion is it possible for all of them to somehow coincide at the same point ok. So, that is question number 1 and here is another question can all the coins move to the negative part of a real axis move to the um, you know move to non negative integer positions let us write it like that move to uh, no, sorry non positive so what what do i mean by the non positive integer positions that is number 0 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on. So, is it possible for all the integers to somehow for all the coins to somehow move in such a way that they lie on the negative part of the, the uh, real axis ok. So, the, there are these 2 questions and what we want to understand is you know somehow by analyzing the moves that are allowed for the system can it somehow happen that the at some time t that configuration A happens or configuration B happens ok. So, those are the questions that we want to answer. And here is the answer which is based on the, the following important observation. Notice that if you you know the, the rule, so let us define a function. So, let me say the configuration. So, suppose I am given a configuration. So, what is a configuration? It is just the 4 positions of the first coin, the second coin, the third coin and the fourth coin. So, I have these 4 positions. Now, let us define a function. So, let me call this configuration as C. Let us define a quantity, let us call it gamma of C. Okay, it is a quantity which depends on this configuration C. Let us define it just to be the sum of these 4 numbers n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4. Okay, so, to each configuration we associate this, this number is the sum of the 4 positions. Now, observe what happens as uh, the configuration evolves ok. So, let us come back here and write down these numbers. So, here are my here are my configurations if you wish. So, let me now call it configurations. And let us compute the gamma function ok on each of these configurations. So, now observe that the very first guy has uh, let us see 2 plus 1 3 minus 1 is 2. Now, the second fellow here is uh, 3 plus 3 6 minus 4 which is 2 again. This is 6 minus 4 which is 2 again and so on. So, here is what you will observe pretty much any configuration that you can obtain by applying the rules will always give you the same value of gamma. Gamma will always be a 2. And this of course, not at all surprising if you really analyze the rule properly. So, what do the rules say? Well, you pick any 2 of these 4 numbers n 1, n 2, n 3 and n 4 you pick 2 of them you increase one of them by k and you decrease the other by k that is what the rule says. And of course, doing that will not change the sum of the 4 numbers right. So, one of them will increase by k the other goes down by k and the total sum remains a constant ok. So, 
as the system evolves, the function gamma does not change. That is the key observation here. Observe that as the system evolves, the gamma function remains the same. So, this is often expressed by saying that gamma is conserved. Okay. So, of course, you know what uh, finding a, a quantity which is conserved may not be very easy in uh, any given situation, but if the, the evolution, the rules for evolution admit a conserved quantity, it often makes answering questions like what we post somewhat easier at least in some cases. So, let us now use this to answer our first question. So, the first question said can it happen somehow that all the 4 coins are located at the same point. So, I want to know let us call this uh, integer as p can it happen that my configuration. So, can I land up with a configuration that looks like p p p p that is the question ok as time evolves. Now, let us uh, see if this is possible. So, what is gamma the gamma function for this configuration is just the sum of the 4 numbers that is 4 p and what do we know the gamma function does not change right. So, the starting configuration had gamma function as 2. So, of course, whatever configuration you can get at some time t had better also have the same gamma function. So, if at all it is possible to get to p p p p then this equation must be true 4 p must be equal to 2 or in other words p is half ok. But observe that is not possible because p was supposed to be an integer right p is the position of the coins. So, p is an integer. So, this is not possible ok. So, it is actually not possible to get all 4 coins to coincide at the same point ok. Now, I leave the second question as an exercise try using the same argument just the same apply the same gamma function to conclude that it is not possible for all 4 coins to somehow move to the negative part of the real axis ok. So, the second question is an exercise for you to try. Now, let us do some more examples. So, here is example 2. So, here is again you know we need to describe a system. So, now my system is the following it is a it is a configuration of 4 points on the plane ok. So, what are my 4 points? So, let us just say I have one of them is so, they are the 4 corners of the unit square. So, these are my this is my initial configuration ok. So, what are these points? Uh, maybe should have colored them yellow. So, here is 1, here is 1. So, these are 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1. So, I, I place 4 coins on the plane and now what do I do? I need to tell you how the evolution takes place. So, what are the rules for uh, evolving the system? So, here are the allowed moves at each time t we apply you are allowed to do the following you are allowed to apply one of the following 3 linear transformations. what are the 3? I will call them f 1, f 2, f 3. So, there are 3 functions which are all linear transformations. What you can do is you can apply that function to all 4 points at once. So, let us first write out what are these linear transformations. So, f 1 is defined as follows f 1 of x y is 2 x comma half y that is one function. Second function f 2 x y is y comma x and f 3 of x y is given by see it is 2 x plus 3 y 3 x plus 4 y ok. So, here is what we do we explicitly give 3 linear transformations 3 transformations of the plane and a move consists of the following at each time t you pick one of these 3 possible linear transformations and you apply it to the 4 points. Yeah, so, let us let us give an example. So, here is the configuration. So, again here is time. So, what are the configurations? Well, at time t equal to 0 the initial configuration consists of the 4, four points 0 0 
one zero one one sorry uh, zero one and one zero. So that is where my four uh, coins are placed. Now, what happens at time t equal to 1? So, maybe we will uh, should probably have it in like this. That is the position. At time t equal to 1, I pick one of these three linear transformations. So, let us imagine I pick the transformation f 3. Now, what I will do is I will apply f 3 to all these four points. Okay? So, after all it is a transformation. So, what does f 3 do to 0 0? Well, we have to calculate, but it is clear it maps it to 0 0 again. If you take 1 comma 0, it maps it to 2 comma 3. Take 0 1, it maps it to 3 comma 4. And if you take 1 1, it maps it to 5 comma 7. Okay. So, these 4 become the new positions of the, the 4 coins. Okay. So, observe those are actually the 4 corners of parallelogram. So, we have sort of looked at these things when we looked at the transformations. So, this is uh, so I do not know it is 2 comma 3, 3 comma 4. So, it is some parallelogram like this. So, those the corners of this parallelogram are now the new positions of the coin. So, originally they were at the they were the corners of a unit square after a time t equal to 1 maybe it became a parallelogram okay? and time t equal to 2 you again pick one of these you pick f 1 or f 2 or f 3 you apply it to this parallelogram it will transform to something else okay? and those become the new positions and so on and so forth. So, the evolution is given by the following rule you pick any one of the 3 f 1, f 2 or f 3 and you apply it to all 4 points all 4 corners. So, now here is the question uh, the system now of course, evolves with time and we ask a similar thing at some point of time is it possible for the system to be in the following configuration. So, question can the system reach the following configuration. So, well, what configuration do we want? We want the four points to be the corners of a rectangle of side 3 and 2. So, is it possible as the system evolves for it to somehow get these four points to lie on the corners of a rectangle of sides 3 and so, that is now the question. So, again, so here is the answer which again follows the same prototype as we did for the earlier case. What we will try and do is to find the conserved quantity, you fi try and find a function which does not change with time. Okay? So, as the configuration changes, the function, however, remains the same. Okay? And what is the function here? Well, it is rather easy the gamma function. So, let us define gamma of a configuration. So, let C be some configuration of the four points and we define the gamma function as follows gamma of a configuration is just the area of of the the parallelogram so in general it will always be a parallelogram so it's the area of the parallelogram with vertices being the four points of c with vertices being the points in the configuration C. So, remember now C now denotes it is a set of 4 points P 1, P 2, P 3, P 4. Okay. So, now the function here is just the area function okay. and again observe that. So, this is something that we, we did last time the area is just given by. So, if I apply. So, now observe that uh, last time we had the following fact that if I have a region R, so let us recall the following, if I have a region R on the plane, let us say a square or pretty much any polygon and I apply a linear transformation to it. So, I apply a linear transformation and this might become some parallelogram here. This is the image f of R. Then here is what we said the area of f of R divided by the area of R. So, this was what we call the area dilation factor can be simply computed by just taking the determinant of the matrix representation of f. 
So, this we said is just the absolute value of the determinant of the matrix encoding of f. Okay. So, this is the area dilation that the, the transformation f induces. So, let us do it in each of these cases. So, I have my function f 1 is just given by 2 x and half y. So, let us write the matrix corresponding to f. So, it is just 2 and half with zeros here that is the matrix corresponding to x 1. The matrix corresponding to f 2 is just well at 0 1 and x just means 1 0. So, you should just check that uh, what I am doing is right here and this is just 2 x plus 3 y. So, 2 3, 3 x plus 4 y. So, 3 4. So, this was our recipe for constructing the matrices from the, the formulas for the functions. And now, let us do the following, let us compute the determinants of these matrices. Okay. So, if you compute the determinant, it is just sort of the A d minus B c formula, here it is a 1, this is a minus 1, 4 2s are 8 minus 9 minus 1. Okay. So, observe that the first transformation has determinant 1, the remaining 2 have determinant minus 1, but in any case the absolute value, the modulus of the determinant is 1 in all 3 cases. Okay. So, what does that imply? It says that well, if you take f 1 or f 2 or f 3, they all scale the area by a factor of 1. Okay. So, the area dilation factor is 1 for all 3 of our functions for f 1, f 2 and f 3. Okay. So, all 3 have the same area dilation factor means that if you start with since our initial configuration was a square of side 1. So, what does this imply? I had a square of, of a unit square of area 1 to start with. No matter how it evolves, so no matter, so this was our initial configuration and now how does the system evolve with time? You apply either f 1 or f 2 or f 3 in order to get the next step, right. So, in the next step is something the result of applying f 1, 2 or 3 to this guy. And now, what do we do in the next step? You again apply f 1 or f 2 or f 3 and what does that make it? Well, it might make it something else maybe and so on. Okay. So, this is how the configurations evolve with time, but what we know is that at each step the area dilation factor is 1. What does that mean? The area of this figure whatever it may be will always remain the same because the dilation is just by a factor of 1. So, these figures whatever they are all have the same area. Okay. So, observe that gamma of c we just said it is the area of the parallelogram. So, gamma of c which is the area in this case remains unchanged means constant as the system evolves. So, let us use this to answer the question again. So, here is the conserved quantity for this evolution rule. Okay. So, as the system evolves gamma remains the area remains a constant. So, the question we asked is it possible at some point of time for these 4 points to form the vertices of a rectangle of area 6 is of course, not possible. right? So, because the area would be a 6 here whereas, the initial configuration that we started out with only had area 1. Okay. So, you can never get these 4 points to make a, a figure whose area is 6, they will always only make a parallelogram of area 1. Okay. So, these are 2 examples of conserved quantities and where the I mean the fact that there is a conserved quantity allows you to make uh, you know uh, at least answer some questions rather quickly. The impossibility of, of attaining certain configurations can be quickly answered from this. Okay, so, next time we look at a few more examples of conservation principles.